Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So, the biggest thing to hit the classical reform service in years. <laughs> you know, how do, how do you shake up a service that is meant to be uh, appropriately respectful of the past, right? And the nature of this service is, is on purpose that. This service is meant to be an homage to where we come from, and yet, yet intensely modern, right? The modernity of the classical reform service, right? A modern classical reform service. So let, let's call it what it is. It's it, it's because it's to call it classical reform is strange because, of course, it is the most still the most modern service we have, and it is the most modern service we have because the purpose of this service is to elevate prayer in English so that people who don't speak Hebrew can pray meaningfully. That was the original intent behind this prayer service. So here we have an amazing thing. This is the Union Prayer Book Sinai Edition Revised. And as uh, our, our new president, Julie, said, why w I can't imagine why anyone would have done this. Right? Why, why would someone create a new prayer book for what is, all in, in all, for all intents and purposes, a service that lives in the old prayer book? And the answer is, if we are going to pay, be loyal to the principles that brought Engli prayer into English, then we need to actually update the English once in a while. Furthermore, there are innovations in a layout that make this prayer book much easier to navigate than the old prayer book. And we'll see. So, but I want to caution everybody. I'm big into this idea that we experiment. We don't solve things forever. And that this is an experiment. So please, use your normal willingness to come and tell me everything that is wrong. <laughs> to not hold back on your feelings about this. And, and should you think I am being facetious in any way, shape, or form, I want to be absolutely clear. I take no greater blessing or honor than your willingness to be honest with me. Uh, I moved here to what I call Eden, not Eden, New York, but Eden, period, right? Buffalo is my Eden from Charlotte, North Carolina, where many people flee from here. And I can tell you, my biggest, one of my biggest joys about being here is plain talking. I really like being told how I'm doing to my face and not being told, bless your heart, when people think otherwise. <laughs> which is what I learned to understand in North Carolina, which is that bless your heart has many meanings, some of which are much clearly expre expressed with four-letter words that I cannot say from the bima. <laughs> we are turning to page seven. This experiment is on account of the conversation and subsequent generosity of Toby and John Laping. So I would like to invite them up in appreciation of their continued support of the nature of our family. They're going to help us light candles. Again, we're on page seven. It will hopefully seem mostly familiar, even as the language is updated. The service hasn't changed all that much. So we read responsively, Come, let us welcome Shabbat. May its radiance warm our hearts as we kindle these tapers. Light is the symbol of God's presence in our lives. The Eternal One is our light and our salvation. Light is the symbol of the holiness within each of us. The human spirit is the light of God. Light is the symbol of Israel's mission. As it is written, I have made you a covenant people to serve as a light to the nations. 
Therefore, in the spirit of our ancient tradition that hallows and unites Israel in all lands and all ages, we kindle the lights of Shabbat. We praise our eternal God, creator of the universe, who hallows our lives through laws and ethical teachings. We are mindful of these timeless values as we kindle the lights of Shabbat. May God bless us with Shabbat joy. May God bless us with Shabbat holiness. May God bless us with Shabbat peace. Amen. Thank you both so much. Thank you so much. Please. We are going to continue with Sun on the Treetops, which is not in this prayer book, but all of you know it, so, or most of you do. And it's in English. Yep, that's right. Are you saying it's on page five? Four. It is on page four. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. God That's bless. <laughs> there we go. See, some days it pays to do things with more people than just one or two. We're going to add this to our program. That's right. <laughs> we are going to continue on page 12. Creator of the universe, we lift up our hearts to you who made heaven and earth. The infinite heavens and the quiet stars tell of your endless power. We turn from our daily toil, from its difficulties and conflicts, from its clamor and its weariness. We meditate on the serene calm of your presence that pervades all creation, hallowing our lives with the blessing of Shabbat peace. Source of peace, bless our worship on this Shabbat Eve. Enlighten our eyes to behold your guiding power in all of nature. From the most remote star to our innermost soul, inspire our hearts to love you and to make your will the law of our lives. Grant us comfort in sorrow, strength in trial, and the courage to serve you in all our ways. May our words of prayer and our unspoken meditations be acceptable to you, our creator and redeemer. Amen. 
Come, let us sing unto God. Let us raise our voices in joy to the source of all life. Let us come into the God's presence with thanksgiving. Let our voices ring out in joyful song. Sing unto the Eternal One. Let us proclaim God's redemptive power from day to day. Worship the Eternal One in the beauty of holiness. Let all the world give praise to our Creator. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the field exult and all that is therein. Let the righteous be glad in God's presence and give thanks for God's constant guidance. We turn to page 14 and we rise together for the formal call to worship. Praise the eternal God to whom all praise is due. Let us praise the eternal God to whom all praise is due now and forever. For a We continue on page 15. We praise you, eternal God, creator of the universe, by whose laws the shadows of evening fall and the light of each new day is opened. In wisdom, you have established the change of times and seasons and ordered the ways of the stars in their heavenly courses. You are the creator of heaven and earth, the source of all life. We praise you, eternal God, for the day and its work and for the night and its rest. We continue on page 16 and we read together. Infinite as is your power, even so is your love. It may be seen through the history of our people Israel, through laws and ethical precepts, through statutes and ordinances, you have led us in the ways of righteousness and brought us to the light of truth. Therefore, at our lying down and our rising up, we will meditate on the Torah's teachings, finding within it the inspiration and guidance for our daily lives. May your love never depart from our hearts. We praise you, God. You have revealed your love through our people, Israel. Shema is on page 17. Together in English, hear, O Israel, the eternal is our God, the eternal God is one. Let us praise God who rules in glory forever and ever. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai. may be seated. So on page 19, I get put provided an insert for you. Did everybody find it on page 19? There's a, there's a little insert in there. Call this the fact that some things may not be worth changing. <laughs> that is to say that <laughs> Lori, Lori didn't get one yet. But I do have the old book. <laughs> so, if you look at page 19, these are the words of Via Hafta in updated translation. And a congregant of mine once said to me, how come we never read, thou shalt love the Lord thy God? And I said to that congregant, well, because it's no longer in any of our prayer books. And I realized that that may not necessarily be a good thing. And here, it, this little insert that I stuck there at, in between page 18 and 19 is from the Union Prayer Book. It is the language of the Union Prayer Book. Uh, and I think it may still be more resonant and more powerful than the readings that are on page 19. 
So instead of going forward all at once, we're going to go forward and hold on to something as well. So if you will join me and humor me, we're going to read off the insert instead. And we, we read together. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be upon thy heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt speak of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by thy way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be for frontlets between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them on the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates, that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I apologize for the typo. More things for me to work on for Yom Kippur. We continue on page 20 responsively. The eternal truth is that we worship only one God and there is none else. Through God's power alone has our people Israel been redeemed from the hand of oppressors. Great deeds God has wrought on our behalf and wonders without number. God, God has, has kept, kept us in life and, and has not let our people's footsteps falter. The eternal one was with us during the long years of oppression. Our faith sustained us even when our people suffered the deepest anguish. And, and now that we live in this land of freedom, may we continue to be faithful to God and the teachings of Torah. May God's way guide the lives of all people and unite our hearts in friendship. O God, our refuge and our hope, we sing your praise as did our people in ancient days. Me. Eternal shall reign forever and ever, as you have enabled our people Israel to prevail over arms stronger than our own. So may you give hope to all who are oppressed and persecuted. We praise you, God, Redeemer of our people Israel. We continue on page 24 with Vishamru. We continue with um, the Amidah on page 25. We rise together. <laughs> the 
Eternal God, open my lips that my mouth may declare your glory. We praise you, God of our mothers and fathers, God of Abraham, God of Sarah, God of all generations. You bestow loving kindness on all your people. You remember the devotion of those who came before us. As you guided our ancestors with love, you offer hope to us, their descendants. You are our creator and helper, our guide and protector. We praise you, eternal God, shield of Abraham and help of Sarah. We continue together on page 26. Infinite, Infinite is your power, power O God. God. Great is, is your gift of life. In loving kindness, you sustain the world. Through the endless flow of your blessings, you preserve all of creation. You uphold the falling and heal the sick, free the captive, and keep faith with your people in death as in life. Who is like you, author of life and death? We praise you, God, the source of eternal life. We continue on page 28. Our God and God of all ages, grant that our worship on this Shabbat may be acceptable to you. Sanctify us through the commandments that we may share in the blessings of the Torah. Teach us to be satisfied with the gifts of your goodness and grateful to rejoice in all that you bestow. Purify our hearts that we may serve you in truth. Inspire us to preserve the Sabbath as our sacred heritage from generation to generation that it may bring rest and joy, peace and comfort to our lives. We praise our God who sanctifies Shabbat. We continue on page 29 together. We gratefully acknowledge that the eternal God is our creator and preserver, the rock of our life and the shield of our health. We thank God and sing praises for the gift of life itself for our souls that are ever in God's keeping, for the signs of our Creator's presence that we encounter every day, and for God's wondrous gifts at all times, morning, noon, and night. Truly, our blessings are without end, and God's loving kindness never ceases. Therefore, do we forever put our trust in the Eternal One. You may be seated. We continue on page 30. Grant us peace, your most precious gift, eternal source of peace, and enable our people, Israel, to be its messenger to all the world. Bless our country that it may ever be a pursuer of peace and its advocate in the council of nations. May contentment reign within our borders, health and happiness within our homes, strengthen the bonds of friendship and harmony among the inhabitants of all lands, plant virtue in every soul, and may our love for you hallow every home and every heart. We praise you, O God, giver of peace. Amen.
We now take a few moments and pray silently. So I very much appreciate our conversation that takes place in this particular service. One of the themes that I feel like we've talked about, uh, in that I've talked about it and you have uh, at least listened uh, seemingly attentively, is, is the idea that a prayer for healing feels odd that it feels li like hearkening back to uh, a supernatural interventionist theology that most of us don't buy into. And so I've been working on coming up with a whole host of reasons why we Reformed Jews are attached in particular to saying and singing a Misha Berach at this time uh, across the country. This is a very... Uh, powerful moment. And so one of the things that I've come up with is that the Jewish prayer cycle is meant to give us a break on Shabbat. Our services on Shabbat have fewer blessings, not more. We add some things, but really the main part of our petitions where we're asking for change in the world are left out, except for this one. And one of the things I've come up with recently is that illness doesn't stop on Shabbat either. And that therefore, when we think of the world, even as we do on Shabbat, as a taste of the world to come, we realize that that taste still has difficulties, that there is still the sourness of struggle and illness in our friends and family, that at this time, in this space, we are often reminded of those who could not be here. And therefore, it is upon us to recognize their absences, to recognize that the difficulties overcome in getting here. And so that when we say Amisha Berach, it is a reminder to devote our attention to those who are in need of help. In this particular case, those who are in need of help are those who are ill. So if any of you have know of anyone in your lives who needs uh, healing of any sort, please mention their names now. Darlene Mercado.
Praised are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, healer of the sick. Thank you so much. As always, it is such a joy to share the Bima with Dr. Rory Ullman. Uh, let us say Shachianu for our prayer book, and then I'll hear responses in a moment. Uh, blessings and then curses. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Shehechianu Vikiyamanu Vehigianu Lazman Hazeh. Praised are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who gives us life, who stands us up and sustains us and brings us to special times like this. Times when we embrace something new, maybe not just for the idea of newness, but the question of, is whether in, there is real improvement here. Uh, I am often, uh, like many uh, people of my particular uh, genetic makeup, meaning I bear a Y chromosome, uh, entranced by the idea of the new. Uh, I resist it. Uh, I don't, I have learned that just because it's shiny and new doesn't make it a good thing. Just it because it has new beeps and whistles and uh, cool hubcaps doesn't make it a great thing. And yes, I remember hubcaps before we all had alloy wheels. I'm not that young. Anyway, this week's Torah reading, uh, and I really do look forward to all of your feedback on this book. Uh, again, it's an experiment, and uh, I am interested in seeing if it enhances our worship experience, if it is still uh, embracing the spirit of why we come together for this particular service. If it isn't, obviously we'll go back and we'll do something else. But let's give it a couple of times. We're not just going to do one service with it. We'll do a, a few and we'll uh, see how it sits. 
Ela Hadivarim. These are the words, the matters, the substances that Moses spoke to the Israelites for a second time. The book of Deuteronomy, aptly named for Deutero, for the second recita recitation of many, many mitzvot. Many, by the way, are new, though. Interestingly enough, when we repeat things in Judaism, we often add. Uh, so always be, you always have to be careful when dealing with a lawgiver. Uh, when they show up and they say, by the way, this is all these other things. We talked about this tonight, right? There are two versions of these. One in Exodus, right? Uh, these, I'm talking about the Ten Commandments, right? Not the, not the book of Job. So the, one, the ones in Exodus are, are these, as is. So, I am God, no other gods before me. Uh, don't take God's name in vain. Remember Shabbat and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. Uh, don't murder, don't adulter, don't steal, don't bear false witness, and don't covet all your neighbor's stuff and his wife and his ox and his, uh, and his donkey and all that is your neighbor's. In Deuteronomy, they change a little bit. In Deuteronomy, this one, number five, says, fear your mother and your father, as opposed to honor your father and your mother. Uh, we often... Uh, rabbis tend to interpret this as the idea that in the ancient world, uh, as, as I said to Eric tonight, because he wanted to be feared and respected, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> clearly, clearly, you have teenagers, so this is, this, this is more, this is more. <laughs> In any event, as you can see, our ancestors grappled with the same issue we do now, which is the temptation to stone our children and the reality of not being able to. <laughs> so we have second recitations of rules because sometimes they need to be expanded. Sometimes they need to be elaborated. Uh, the honor and fear thing was often uh, interpreted to be that it was easier to honor our mothers, and therefore it's honor your father and mother, father put first, and easier to fear our fathers, and therefore it's fear, be in awe of our mother and father, so that the differential is compensatory for the stereotypical or natural inclinations of people. We live in a world filled with things that are repeated at us, that are emphasized, that are, uh, you know, given to us in so many different packages over and over and over again. And the Jewish ask for all of us is, how do we saw, sort through all of these divarim? Right? Moses gives it to us twice to give a guideline, a, a purpose, a sense that li listening to it a second time all together, right before you go into Israel, on the banks of the Jordan, gives us a chance to reflect on it, to rethink it, to re-examine it. We don't have that chance anymore. What is repeated to us most often in the world around us is not evaluated, it is not reflected upon, it is merely repeated. And I am asking us tonight to figure out how to use more judgment and less uh, acceptance in our listening. And this seems counterintuitive because, of course, judgment gets a bad name in our culture. Judgment leads to the, reminds us of the phrase judgmental. And being judgmental is really about prejudging, not good judging. Right? Good judging, mishpat, the judgment that we are given from Torah, this idea of a judge in our society and ancient society is someone who weighs something, somebody who deliberates on something, somebody who looks at not just pro and con, but everything in between. And the word that I really want to aim for here is discernment, because I think in our current culture, we lack this a lot, and it has become a very valuable and very rare skill. 
the number one rabbi in the world right now is Rabbi Google. If all of you have a question, you don't call me, you search for it, right? If you have a question, we gone. The problem with Rabbi Google is there is no judgment in Rabbi Google. There is no discernment. Rabbi Google is repeat, 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 zero reason, zero understanding. And our goal as Jews is to bring discernment to an issue, to bring judgment to an issue, to understand that when I've put in a search parameter and I get 500 screens about Parshat Devarim, I need to be able to tell which of these words are from a messianic rabbi, which of these words are written by Christians about Jews, which of these words are from Jews I might agree with and learn from, and which are from Jews that I might disagree with and learn from. Right? Eisha Torah and Chabad come up a lot more than the URJ through Rabbi Google. Rabbi Google likes the people that, pe that put out more material, and God only knows no one can keep up with Orthodox rabbis in putting out material. So there's a lot of search engine optimization for Rabbi Google's preference for the Orthodox, or for the Messianic Jews. Messianic Jews create a whole host of stuff and it takes you a couple paragraphs before you get down to the fact that Jesus has made it into their Judaism, therefore making it suspiciously not ours. This is what we bring to the universe, to the planet, is discernment, this hope that we can find some difference, some distinction, some judgment where none existed before, that we can sift through all of these divarim, all of these words. And there's a lot. I would put it forward to us all that the news of this week is not the news that we have heard. That the news of this week might be the 24 hours in the south of Israel when 300 rockets were launched against Israel from Gaza. 300 rockets in 24 hours. Can you imagine another country in the world attacked by its neighbor? It doesn't matter for whatever reason doesn't matter, politics aside, attacked by 300 rockets in one day, and it doesn't make the news. How many of you knew about that without looking at my Facebook page when I put it out there? One. That's a very small percentage of us. How many of us knew that Israel passed a racist national law this week as well? Right? Funny, you knew that. You know why? Because Israel is our number one villain in the, the international world right now. That's not discernment. That's repetition. No, it's the number one international villain. Our country doesn't agree about whether or not President Putin is a villain. That's quite clear. We don't. But a lot of people in this country seem to agree about whether or not Israel is a villain. And that's problematic for us. That's a lack of judgment and discernment. And it's also a huge lack of information. A huge lack of information. So what do we do with that? What do we do with all these words, right? Moses repeats over and over again, these are the things, these are the blessings and the curses. This is where we came from and where we're going to. This is where we screwed up. We get a lot of that in Deuteronomy. All these places, Bamidbar, in the wilderness where we didn't do so well. It happens over and over again. Why? Because we're supposed to remember that things work out sometimes when we think they're going badly, and things go badly often when we think they're working out, that there's something going on under the surface, that Moses was able to get water from the rock, right? The outcome was good, and he was still punished for it because the method was bad. The story is more complicated than did Moses get water for the people. It's much more complicated. Intent counts for what we read and where it comes from. Intent counts in striking the rock or speaking to the rock. We have, last week, we talked about cities of refuge 
for those who accidentally killed people, for those who performed, who, who were uh, criminals who did manslaughter as opposed to murder. In the Torah, we have the difference between first-degree murder and manslaughter. What's the difference? Intent. If I set out to run somebody over or I accidentally run somebody over, the result, the outcome, is unfortunately the same for the poor person who gets hit by my car. The difference is in my intent. We make cities of refuge for those who unintentionally hurt people so that no one can pursue vengeance against them. The story is always more complicated. There are always more words. We need to look deeply and figure out which ones mean what, where they come from, and why. We need to weigh them in good judgment, in good discernment. And so I'm going to ask us all to offer a prayer today because I think our Jewish community needs a prayer, and we have this wonderful prayer book with new words in it, so let's look at some of them. Please turn to page 411. And if we're going to think of the way in which this prayer book might help us, it's in some of the updating of some of the things that we've experienced as a community. And here is some of that. We start together on the top of 411. Our lot has fallen in pleasant places. The American experience is, for the Jewish people, unique in our history. We thank God for the privilege of sharing the countless blessings of our land and for the opportunities to contribute to its well-being. We are also aware that an unbreakable bond unites the household of Israel throughout the world. We share with Jews everywhere a common history and a common destiny. We have been taught that all the people of Israel are responsible for one another. May God be with our brothers and sisters whose lives are made hard because they are Jews. May God grant them strength to endure and lead them soon from subjugation to freedom, from darkness to light. We remember, O oh God, we will not, we cannot forget the pain of our fellow Jews everywhere is our pain. Auschwitz is our experience. Israel reborn is our joy. We were with our brothers and sisters in darkness. We are with them in the emerging light. May your favor rest on the land of Israel, its diverse peoples and faith communities. Protect Israel against hatred and war. Grant that the promise of its origins soon may be fulfilled in peace and harmony. May the bonds that unite the Jewish people everywhere be a source of strength to us all. Secure in our freedom and can... May we go forward with vision and dedication. May we grow in wisdom and compassion for all people with whom we share this blessed land. Amen. And Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We ask you to rise together for the adoration on page 368. That's 368. We rise together. Oh, 
together on the top of page 369. May the time not be distant, O God, when you shall be worshipped throughout the earth, when unbelief shall disappear and error be no more. Fervently we pray that the day may come when all people shall be guided by your teachings. Corruption and evil shall give way to purity and goodness. Superstition shall no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye. Then all who dwell on earth shall know that to you alone every knee shall bend and every voice give praise. May all created in your image recognize that we are brothers and sisters so that one in spirit and one in harmony we may be forever united before you. Then shall your reign be established on earth and the word of your ancient prophet be fulfilled the eternal God will reign forever and ever. On that day, the eternal shall be one, and God's name shall be one. My You may be seated. In nature's ebb and flow, God's eternal law abides. When tears dim our vision and grief clouds our understanding, we often lose sight of God's plan. Yet we know that both growth and decay, life and death, all reveal God's purpose. God, who is our support in the struggles of life, is also our hope in death. We have set the eternal one before us and shall not despair. In God's hands are the souls of all the living. Under God's protection we abide, and by God's love we are comforted. O oh, life of our life, soul of our soul, cause your light to shine into our hearts and fill our spirits with abiding trust in you. On this day in our community, we mourn with the family of Michael Babbitt, who passed in this period of Shloshim not so long ago, during the first month of mourning. We remember those whose yard sites are at this season, Jason M. Alder, Cora Rosenberg Barman, Catherine H. Block, Stella K. Cohen, Eugene L. Daniels, Samuel Desmond, Mildred Edelman, Mildred Edelman, Tina Elman, Martin B. Freed, Benjamin S. Goldman, Catherine M. Goldstein, Frida Ballatin Schaffer Harris, Frida Herman, Sarah Kadish, Rosalind S. Kahn, Evelyn Sperling Levy, Sadie E. Nathan, Marion Dreyfus Newman, Laura Rose Block Pearlstein, Harry Samuel Piver, Norman Risman, Rachel Rothenberg, Esther Lieberman Sickerman, Alfred B. Silverman, Anne Warner Simon, Rosabel H. Sloan, Dr. Emil Sternberg, Irving Sterner, and Matilda W. Warner. I heard also that we recognize that today would have been the birthday of uh, your mother. Is that correct? God bless. Other people that we are remembering today? Thank you. 
I hope that the spirit of Rabbi Goldberg and the spirit of Rabbi Fink are not upset with me. Um, I only wish to honor them as we offer this prayer book tonight. Uh, and uh, because after all, uh, it is in their name that we use the UP prayer, UPB prayer book here. And they made the liturgy. I know that when we read its words, many of you hear their voices. And so uh, it's not their yard sites, but I know they are present with us. It is our custom here to rise together and offer the Mourner's Kaddish. Mourner's Kaddish is on page 375. I'd like to point out that we have two different pronunciations in this, so if you'd like to follow the pronunciation according to what it calls contemporary pronunciation, which is Sephardic Israeli style Hebrew on page 375, or if you'd like to follow the pronunciation of perhaps those more familiar to some of us, it's on page 377, the Ashkenazi pronunciation. So a little uh, both and. Yitkadav yitkadash shemei raba, be'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute, v'chaye chon uv'yome chon uv'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael, v'agala uv'yizman kariv v'imru amen. Yehe shemei raba mevarach le'alam u'alme almaya, yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh, Vita dar vita le vita lao shame de kudisha berihu. La ela minko birchata vishirata. Tush bechata venechemata. Dame ran biama vimru amen. Yehe shalama raba min shamaya. Vehayim alenu vialko Israel. Vimru amen. O se shalom bimromav. Huya se shalom. Alenu vialko Israel. Vimru amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved. And let us say, Amen. We say, Zichronam Levracha, may their memories always be for blessings. May we make their memories blessings. You may be seated. Kiddush is on page 383. And... Dr. Ullman definitely gets a drink. She had a lot of traffic on the way here this, this evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I think I'll pass. <clears throat> uh. Uh. Yeah. Oh, I forgot announcements. Boy, I'm terrible. Let's do that. Yes. Look at that. I just ran right through. I am so, <laughs> so sorry. Excited. I look excited by the new prayer book and the whole deal. Thank you <laughs> for reminding me. I'm not going to go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This is indeed a very wonderful and special evening. It's a lot of new things, new books, and uh, a lot of new traditions we may be making in the process. So uh, everyone, uh, I believe most of you know me, but I am Susan Bring Toby. I am a trustee of Temple Beth Zion, and I want to welcome everyone who is here tonight. And if you are a visitor especially, to welcome you. Uh, for information on upcoming events, you should have a blue program. Blue program? Okay. Uh, there are a few things in here of note. Tomorrow morning, I just want to point out that Adam Field will be chanting Torah. Adam is also a trustee of, board, of uh, Temple Beth Zion. So uh, if you are present tomorrow morning right here, you will hear Adam. And, Actually, uh, it will be in the Sisterhood oh, Chapel. Oh, in Sisterhood Chapel. Okay, well, again, tomorrow night is also very special. It's the 9th of Av, the Tisha B'Av, and the rabbi, right, will be going over a multi-media -present presentation and discussion of the works of Dr. Jonathan Haidt, uh -huh. whose seminal book, The Righteous Mind, Why Good People Are Divided by Politics and Religion, is going to help us explore how to speak with people and create common ground. So that is at tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And on this day of contemplation and commemoration, let's gather to reflect on how to make and create a better world, which is a 
very nice follow-up to what you just said. Thank you. Thank you. And to make a more peaceful and harmonious world in, in the face of dissent and difficulty. So there are two things coming up in August, which I think most of you are aware. The uh, barbecue, Kabbalat Shabbat service, and barbecue is Friday, August 3rd. Now, I looked at this very carefully, and maybe this is a result of a new book or a new announcement, but it doesn't say where. Broder. <laughs> I'm going to guess it's at Broder. It's at Broder. Broder. <laughs> Broder. Okay. It's so, up in Amherst. So Johnny C's is going to do the uh, catering. Uh, so that's New York style deli and so forth. So that should be fun. No, but I think this is uh, um, New York style barbecue, which means barbecue, no jelly, <laughs> hamburgers <laughs> and hot dogs. And so you'll see the amounts there. And oh, for anyone who may be watching us online, if you can be there, we would also appreciate your company Friday, August third, at the Broder uh, Building. You can call Becky at 836-6565 uh, or contact email becky at tvz.org to RSVP by Friday, June, June 27th. My goodness, it's got to be July 27th. I think that's July 27th. So see, new things every year. It's a little bit of difference. <laughs> yes. And another thing which we've done for a few years, but it's different again this year, is the summer celebration on August 6th. This year... Uh, our new host partners are Congregation Shir Shalom and the Buffalo Jewish Federation. So it's our honor to extend a, a special invitation to all of you and all of them to join us for our 20th annual summer celebration and golf tournament. It takes place on Monday, August 6th at Transit Valley Country Club in East Amherst. For the details, you can again contact the office uh, you can see your weekly email. The July bulletin has information. You can talk to any of us. We will be happy to tell you about it. If you're interested in participating or making a donation or donating auction items or being a sponsor for the event, we're still happy to have that contact from you. So please call us or call Julie Feldman at the, t at the Temple office. Have I missed anything? I uh, hope not. Uh, if I haven't met you, I hope that you will stop uh, afterwards and join us. There is something else I do want to take a moment. Uh, the rabbi mentioned that it is my late mother-in-law's birthday had she lived to be 95 today. And uh, it is also uh, our pleasure that the hala tonight was made by her granddaughter, Sabrina Sarah Toby, who is with us tonight and has baked two fabulous challah. So please make sure that you get your share. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, one of them is a seven braided challah. Is that correct? Six. Six. Six braids. So uh, the, the appropriate multiplicity for our Parsha of Devarim. So you didn't know that you were symbolically uh, supporting the Torah reading this weekend. So awesome. <laughs> we're very, we're very proud of our niece. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank, Thank you. you, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Laurie. Beautiful. All right, Kiddush. Uh, now that we've done announcements, I apologize. Page three hundred and eighty-two and eighty-three. Amen. Baruch Atah Adonai, 
So is one of the challahs here? Ooh. And there's, oh my God, it's gorgeous. It's Ashanda to tear into it. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Amen Bateavon Mmm, oh. Bon appetit, let's eat. Uh, Adon Olam, our concluding song, is on page 424. It is a tree of life, that Torah that we read and that we study to all who hold fast to it, and all of its supporters find strength and contentment when we work together to make the world a better place, one conversation, one relationship at a time. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.